Welcome to the Northeast Kingdom Voice. I'm your host, Scott Wheeler. Today's, today we took a field trip to the garden shop in, on Elm Street in Newport. And um, today I'm gonna be teaching these women how to cook. <laughs> but actually, they are gonna teach me how to cook. At least they're gonna talk about how their cooking show came about in Cassie's business for the love of food. Yep. We've actually aired before. It was during Brew, Virtual yep. Brew Fest. Yeah, it was one of the uh, starters of the food show for sure. I did it and fell in love with it. Um, and was like, I've got to do this again. And you, after having me on your show, you said, I've got to have him on again. I but, did. But you're and he on, was so you're much on my fun. show. So you're Cassie <laughs> So Moulton. Cassie Moulton, owner of the For Love of Food Catering, which is in Barton, Vermont. Hillary Wright, and, owner of the Garden Shop. And the town of Newport. Right. <laughs> Derby. Derby. <laughs> now remember the rules of cooking and I tried to explain to you. I've tried to break you from all this fancy stuff. Yes. I said there's no reason that a stove needs anything but on and off. Everything yes. goes on high. And you no. also <laughs> said you were like a one ingredient. No, cooker. three, three. Oh, three ingredients. Three ingredients. And, and, and that, but I don't use, I hardly use any salt. Don't like it. Pepper, pepper and everything. Really? Now, how am I doing so far? Well, yeah. I would say an epic failure. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you wanted the truth. No. But, but you're <laughs> cooking, so I mean, you yeah. know. Right, if you eat it. You. Right. I mean, I kind of feel bad for Penny because yeah. Penny has, has eaten my food before. Right. I've catered where she's at. She always comes up and she's like, oh my God, your food is so good. <laughs> now I'm wondering if it's really that good or if it's just she's used to what you cook. So well, 35 years later, she finally has said, <laughs> do not later. make me any more eggs. I can't even make a decent egg. Stop it. And I can't because it's, you know, you turn it on high and weird things happen to eggs, it. Eggs, believe weird. it or not, they say eggs are some of the, it's not the most complicated food. I can to picture all the like chefs and all the cookies, like really gassy. But eggs are not an easy thing to well, cook. Well, they like, cook fast, so you can yeah. easily overcook them. Yeah, you can easily overcook them. And our get, we just got done a cooking show, and our guest, I think if I would have told her that eggs are easy to cook, she probably would have disagreed with me. <laughs> you know one thing I can't, you know, there's a lot of things I can't eat, but I can't go and put... I'm a meat eater, but I still can't put a lobster in a boiling pot of water. Oh, really? No. I, feel I bad talk for it. to them, and I <laughs> tell them like a little like lullaby before I tell them they're going to bed, because I'm not like yeah. <laughs> I'm like I'm wicked sorry, but I'm like you taste delicious, and so, like oh, I'll tell you my secret. Yeah. I call Shaw's or Price Chopper and have them oh, steam gee. them, and then I go pick them up. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to feel bad. Do you lazy man them too? No. No, no. I pictured you like, can you lazy man my lobsters and, and get yeah. them ready for me? No. That's one way to do it because they yeah. steam them right there, yeah. right? It's and the you're best. so close that you could be back home and eating lobsters. Yeah. And you don't lobster. have the mess, you know. Yeah. Done. Yeah. So you, is, is this both of your show, you tag team? We do. So how did this show come about? Is it for people like me who are just a mess? Like I'm like that Swedish chef. The, the, oh, from the, the Muppets? The Muppets, you know. You know <laughs> do, 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 and, uh, do. <laughs> and that's me. Everything goes everywhere. I, I kind of feel Can, the same way. Oh, do you? <laughs> yeah, I kind of get a little messy, but no, I would say that the, the brew fest that we did, definitely I had been thinking about doing some type of food show because I thought it'd be super fun. And when I did the brew fest right. with you up at Todd and Hillary's barn, I had so much fun, like so much fun. I was giddy for days. And... I think it was like what maybe a week later yeah I'm laying in bed and poor Matt the dude he just wants me to keep my mouth quiet like after 8 p.m. I think he's like you know most people like stop social after eight he wants me to shut my mouth after eight but I was like we should do a cooking show and I said we could do it at the restaurant and da 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 and then I was like ah it's kind of boring now and he goes cooking show at your restaurant would be boring I'm like yeah we need something to like I don't know something cool some some catch factor and I said cooking in the garden. I got to call Hillary. Yeah. And, and he's call? like, 
you are not calling Hillary. <laughs> and I'm like, she's probably up. But so I text her, I think I'm the next morning going. at like 605. <laughs> and I was like, Hill, we've got to do it. Garden shop. And she was like, the only thing I got back from her was I'm in. So I was like, it's done. So, um, you, you know, I watch you and, um, you're like the Rachel Ray of the Northeast Kingdom. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But well, I think it's probably a pretty good I, thing. I mean, yeah? she has a She's amazing. I love show. her. I've never been on with you before, so maybe you're Rachel Ray, too. I compare myself to Giada. Okay. <laughs> of course she does. <laughs> so, so who... And that, mind you, has nothing to do with our looks. Please and thank you, Hillary. <laughs> I'm going so, to make her wear a low-cut top next yeah. cooking show. <laughs> so what is, what is the purpose of your show? Of uh, your, Either one of you. Well, the, so the purpose that the that Hillary and I came up with was that there's a ton of Vermont made products, right? In obviously, we are super lucky to be living in Vermont. I mean, we we are really a sustainable state. Yeah. And so Hillary, she can tell you the garden shop story after, but uh, Hillary has the garden shop, and so I was like, perfect. We can utilize the stuff in her shop. We can showcase her amazing flowers while also showcasing food and so it just adds some fun to people you know people can watch the show and they can look at you know just the flowers but they can also see what we're cooking we try to keep our stuff with a lot of vermont based so, yeah. ability to add vermont based products but we also try to focus around um not simple food but good yummy food that doesn't take a lot of work that people can enjoy because sometimes i think maybe maybe you're like this mm -hmm. that you are nervous about cooking and so you keep it to the simple foods like the basic stuff which is nothing's wrong with that but you can add a few things here and there to really get a dish that is simple but delicious and I think you know here in the Northeast Kingdom or rural America in general is you know spices for many years would have just constituted salt and pepper right. and we're very simple meat and potatoes like I have to imagine the right family were meat and potato people. Definitely. Yeah. And <laughs> For sure. Yeah, well, you know, uh, your, uh, well, Matt's, uh, wait, wait, you're married to Matt. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's commonly, that. commonly people okay. confuse that, okay. but yes. Yeah, take that out. Remember what uh, Hillary said? We keep things in the family, yeah. just not that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, uh, Matt's grandmother, uh, Anita Wright, has she given Annette. you, yeah, Annette Wright, have you um, gotten any recipes from her, like for head cheese, blood sausage? Uh, Hill, I haven't. Hill, no. have you? No. no. My grandmother used to make that too, and hers was amazing, but you know, I, yeah, we don't really do I've that. seen, I've seen blood sausage, sausage down at Vista, and I've wanted to buy some. Just oh, it's to, not the same. It's not? No. Not even close? No. Well, I would say that, you know, Hillary and I, Obviously, we're blessed to be a part of the right family because they are an amazing family, and there's a lot of amazing cooks inside that family. Um, you must have to include deer meat. I mean, it is. It would be a staple, a right? Staple. It would be a staple for sure. But I would say that Matthew and Todd are probably palate-wise very similar, except yeah. Todd probably ventures into more seafood than Matt would touch. Uh, most definitely shrimp. Yes. Yeah, That's but like I would say. One. Meat and potatoes for sure. When I first made Matt a gourmet meal, when we first started dating, I'll never forget. He comes over and he's like, sits down, and I'm all excited because I'm giddy. And um, he's like, "You got any ranch?" <laughs> <laughs> I remember being like, poking my head in the fridge, be like, "Who the frick asked for ranch?" I mean, it was a nice dinner that I made. Next thing I know, he's pouring ranch all over this chicken dish I made for him, <laughs> and pushing all the vegetables that I had on the plate to the side. I was like like Cassie just take a deep breath he's cute as a button so I kept cooking for him you know Hillary knowing your family you probably were a meat and potatoes person too oh large. absolutely unless we had spaghetti for dinner right. it was like some kind of protein and mashed potatoes yep. every yep. night that's that's how I grew up and actually trying to change your palate is not an easy thing it's like no. you, a lot of us we love going down occasionally to get Thai food too Mm -hmm. But I have a friend whose wife is a Thai cook, and he says Americans love to have Thai every once in a while, but he says when I go to Thailand for a month, he says the American palate is not made for 
oh. you know, you, right. For right around the clock. So he's sneaking out to McDonald's where he would never <laughs> eat in the United States right. because he... Uh, the yes. cheeseburger or french fries when i went to thailand i ate like i was so excited for the food but by the time i mean by the time i was home i was like give me a pizza yeah yeah give me a burger give me something so how did you change your eating mm -hmm. because you you well obviously being in the restaurants you have to try everything because right. right. you need to recommend it and so yeah slowly through the restaurants you no know, at uh, pie and pasta do they make dishes that you don't personally like? No. Oh, really? Because, because my, if I owned a restaurant, my menu would be really small if I only had things I liked. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. I think, I mean, I think, um, I, I mean, I love pie and pasta, and I think their food is amazing, and their food's delicious, but I think it's okay, though. Like, when I cook uh, some of my dishes for my catering event, right. I don't necessarily think it's the best dish in the sense that it's for my flavor palette, right. but it's, it's, I like to venture out because sometimes I, if I don't, if I don't eat bacon and I never cooked with bacon, my menu would be, yeah, would be lacking. I'm not a huge fish person, right. but you can throw sauce on anything and it makes it good. Right. And it makes it delicious. Yes. You know, I, I, I mean, have... she's got the garden shop too with right. all her gourmet like meats and stuff. So, I mean, if your palate would like to be wowed, have Hillary give you some of the cheeses and the, the pepper the relish on uh, the steaks. Yes. So good. Now, I understood. Somebody told me once that a real cook or a chef, nothing that really irks them more is to have the, the uh, meal put in front of a person and then the person without tasting it, taking salt. And That's me. I always do that. You know, is that, is that Drives something? me crazy. <laughs> Is that something you're not? Is that something you're not supposed to do, though? Or no, well, you're not. For me, salt brings out the flavor. So, right. I mean, there is too much salt, but for me, there really isn't too much salt. Right. Hillary and I love each other very much, but we're going to agree to disagree on this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you saw somebody do that, I what? see it every night at dinner. Oh, do you? Yeah, I think that when you cook a dish, or if you sit down for someone's meal that they prepared for you. You should always take a couple of bites, and then if you feel it needs more salt, add salt to it. That's my opinion, though. Matt does it every night before he even takes a bite. He's like, Tch -tch -tch -tch. that's that's the first thing I reach for. Salt, <laughs> so where where are you going to take this show? Because I do expect you to be nationally syndicated sometime. So are you, you're starting here. We're starting then... here. So we're starting cooking in the garden is definitely our our venture that we started with. Um, but we do have um, ideas that we want to take it on the road a little bit. Um, you know, it, it, it's ever evolving. So I think, you know, it can change. Um, I mean, if we were to get nationally syndicated, I would not be opposed to that. No, me um, neither. Hillary and I could definitely go on the road, right, Hill? Yeah. We'd have fun with that, huh? Absolutely. Um, I mean, I just think it for me, I, I love it. I'm super social, so I love to do anything like this. And I think it really highlights our businesses without us, like, kind of just being like, hey, here's the love of food. Here's the garden face. shop. Right. Yeah, in your face. Yes. We're like, we're just like, hey, check us out. There's, you know, we do things differently. We're fun. We're creative. Um, come join us. And I think that's, um, I know for me, for my business, a lot of people are seeing it and they're really kind of catching on to my business right. because it's fairly new. Um, it's, you know, it's five years old, which is still pretty new in, in the business scheme of things. So I think it just gives people an idea um, that I'm around. And it lets people kind of know our personalities, too, which I think it helps give that familiar feel to it. You know, you know as well as well, I yeah, do. Sure. If, you see sure. some, if you see a business, you're like, oh, great. But if you know the owners and you see kind of how much they right. are investing into it, yeah. not financially, but emotionally, you kind of get an attachment to them. And I think that's what Hillary and I are doing here. Right. Uh, you know, I, I guess we had a little miscommunication at Brewfest because when you snapped open that beer in front of oh. me, I thought you were giving me a beer. So, <laughs> he did and, too. but, but you, he did you too. yeah, and uh, <laughs> so uh, I drank your beer that you meant for cooking, so you had to round up another one. Yeah, it was so funny because I think what, what did we do that day? We did oh, we did um, we did onion tartlets yeah. with um, was it 
I'm going to mess up the beer. I think it was like, um, was it Lost Nations? I don't know. It was, I don't, it was good. I don't remember. But anyways, I did. I cracked it open because I was going to, I was caramelizing the onions. I was going to deglaze the pan. And next thing I know, Scott's drinking it. I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. So I opened another one. But yeah. Well, you know, if brew fest only comes around once, once a year. year. Yeah. Right? I know. It was fun. I mean, I, th I thought that was a fun way to do it. Definitely nothing beats in person, right? Yeah, but uh, the thing is, that was virtual. But I could still see you doing Brewfest this year, even if it is live, as in with people, oh, right. people there. You could still do a show at it, I would imagine. Oh, absolutely. We would love to do that. Yeah. And it could be titled like Drunk Cooking And then people won't think Todd and Hillary are like winos when we're at a Brewfest and there's beer right. everywhere, right? Right. Yeah, I just think, I mean, I think it was fun for us. And I think it's really great to showcase what Hillary offers in the garden shop because... Right. You know, people think still they, again, my business is for love of food, but people will forever call it the candle pin because right. that's the business I right, purchased, right? right? And you're spades. And she's yes. spades. <laughs> and so people don't realize that here they redid the whole inside of it's, they don't sell like flowering stuff. They will obviously, but, um, but they're selling like meats and cheeses and crafts and pottery and so many amazing things that I think this is a good way for yeah, people to constantly see it. Really trying to focus on Vermont yeah. local business. Yeah, and they, they even have that writer. What is his name? Scott, Scott Wheeler. Wheeler. <laughs> they have his books here. My books. And, and his coffee cups. Yeah, my coffee. only get here. Right? Yeah, my Northeast Kingdom <laughs> coffee cups. Um, so what? how can people watch your show? So our show is um, so our show is aired on NEK TV on Tuesdays and Fridays at 1130. Um, I also, it's posted on my website, which is underneath my blog for the love of food, Um, and there's always a link on the garden shop social yes. for the love of food social. Um, it's on our Instagram page. It's on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. Um, so you can pretty much watch it anywhere you want, you know, just to just go onto our Facebook page and find the link and, and you click know, away. and we share producers. Todd Pronto. And, the best producer yeah. and, in the he, world. And he's great at making me look smarter than I am. Because, you know, it's amazing what he can do, splice things together. He can actually splice things together and have string your, your words along and make you say things that you actually never said. But that kind of makes flow. me nervous, yeah, Todd. <laughs> You're not going to do that to us, are you? <laughs> um, so how long have you been at this? Show. This is our fourth, fourth show. show. Yep. Oh, fourth show. Yeah. And uh, then uh, you haven't gotten any calls from uh, Rachel Ray's people looking to. No, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> no, not yet. We're we're thinking though that you know she probably isn't going to want to contact us yet because she's still doing it and she's like those girls are totally going to yeah, replace me. So yeah. You know how long? You know, I've actually been doing this. Let me see here. Todd, the producer, he was at the radio station, must be about like 14 years ago, and he asked me to come up and do a very similar show by radio, which this will also be airing on the radio show, and he offered me big bucks, nothing. <laughs> 14 years later, he's gone, I'm there, still getting paid the same amount. <laughs> Todd brings me down to the TV show, same benefit package and he's there and i'm still there but i'm waiting for him to hit the big time in the music world and then he's gonna remember all the little right. people yeah he's gonna remember us little people that's funny so um what have you cooked on your shows so the first one we did a it was a christmas bake yes yeah so we did a christmas bake uh for christmas morning that was our december show you're really putting me. Oh, January was weight loss. So we yes, did, the uh, yeah, the two ingredient, right? Two ingredient yeah. bagels. Yep. So we did that. Our guest was Lynn Tangway. Um, our third one was Valentine's steak. Day. Yep. Yeah, that was fun. That we did was... steak au poivre. Yes. We got to torch it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Tiffany Morin was our guest. And then um, our show this month we did with Michaela Prey of Envy Photogenics. And we did an Irish soup. Right. So in what is this stuff you made for the show yeah so this is the show we just did today uh with michaela and that was uh cold cannon soup irish cold cannon soup which is um based on 
the, have you ever heard of it, the famous dish, Colcannon um, potatoes, which is potatoes and cabbage, and you put kale and Yeah, the only potato I know is mashed, mashed potatoes, pretty <laughs> much. French fries. French fries, those are delicious. Yeah. Those are probably some of my favorite potatoes right. with their truffle oil. Yes. I know. Um, so yeah, so that's a soup that Hillary was eating before uh, testing for us, and she said it was delicious. It was very good. You know, is there, these things, these are God's gift to the world. Onions. They can I go. I have to say this is too. Yeah. yeah. But they, they can go with anything. Yeah, I agree. Totally. I'm an onion lover, so I totally agree with that. My, um, I know friends who eat onions like apples. Right. I won't go that seriously. far. No. No, seriously. They put a little salt on them, bite right into them. My niece does that with tomatoes and, and peppers, Bob. Well, back in school, elementary school, I think the guy who went on to be my best man, he used to wow people by guzzling vinegar. Ooh. So I, <laughs> so we've talked a little bit about her background of meat and potatoes, but you have a little German cooking in your background. I do. My mom is German. Or my, my Grammy was German, full German, and my mom is obviously half German, but... Um, yeah, uh, my Grammy did a lot of a lot of cooking before she passed, and I loved her food. Loved it. Now is uh, is Venus schnitzel? Is that is that German? It, yeah, Austrian German. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yep. uh, yeah, I I've, I've actually while I cook very plain, I do actually try new foods as long as it doesn't swim. And <laughs> That's too funny. Yeah, so. I if it if it swims, I'm not too interested in it. But uh, I do. You know Thai food, um, and you know, I do try different things, but don't. Eh. I love to try. I'll try anything at I least will try once. Most yeah, I'll try anything at least once. And and believe it or not, my background is probably very similar to Hillary's. I grew up on a farm, so we were all meat and potatoes um, at dinner time. And I was actually joking about it with a friend because I think our last show I dissed cube steak. And I got a few messages that I shouldn't diss cube steak. It's, you know, cooked I'm right. I'm with you on that one. Cooked right. It's amazing. So what did I do? I went out and bought some cube steak. And you loved it. And I, well, that's, yeah. that's a bit much. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> um, So I went out and bought it. It's not cheap, mind you. It's not what I remember. It, mm -hmm. It's not cheap. But um, so I went and did, I did country fried steak. And so I marinated it in buttermilk and a, some seasonings. And then I breaded it and fried it. It was yummy, mind you. Matt thought it was the best dinner ever, surprisingly. Um, not. Um, but I liked I enjoyed it. But I'm like, if I'm going to eat a steak, I'm a New York strip girl. Oh, like I'm a, a filet. A really, really good. I used to be a filet girl. I love filet. And then I started eating New York strips, like prime cut black mm -hmm. Angus New York strips. So good. Oh, I'm, I, I could eat steak every night of the week if, it, if my body liked it. But... Um. Yeah, mine, mine comes out tasting a little bit like rawhide. Everything, my, fortunately, I have my son in law. I'm be so sad. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, I'm sitting here thinking this is really the Northeast Kingdom because here you are, you're with two brothers, right? We and are. Then. We did not the same one, but. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Different ones. Not sisters, wives, or something no, like that. No, definitely not sister wives. Yeah. And, uh, but then we, uh, Hillary and I, we're not quite related. But my, my great nephew and, well, my niece is married to her brother and so oh, on. Yes. So this is, this is small town America. It is small town uh, America. At its uh, best. So knowing that, since you know my wife's family, one time she decided to make a vegetarian lasagna. Mm. How do you think that went over in my wife's family <laughs> Big hunters and big meat eaters. Yeah. No, and that's still a joke. Oh, I get that. That belong, meat belongs yes. in lasagna. Isn't that funny? But no, that didn't go well. We've we've never tried that again. That's but, that's trying to cook for I would say my family too. Yeah. You got to be very cautious what you put on the dinner table. Well, yeah, it's very. You're very fortunate though. The right family. The boys are very subdued. Very <laughs> very quiet. And uh, they don't give. <laughs> and, and, I, I, and, and I, I say, I maybe say. When maybe when they're first waking up, huh? Right. I say that. I say that with love. Uh, and your, and Todd and Matt's grandmother says the secret to success in life is the reason her kids and grandkids are successful was they had to work, 
and they got their butts paddled when they needed it. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't get them paddled no. nearly enough, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so what, we have about five more minutes left. What, do you, what more do you want to talk about your show? Do you have any guests lined up? So we, we don't, yes, so we, but we're not going to tell you what that is because our guests are surprises. And so, but we will tell you about a promotion that we're doing for Mother's Day um, that we just launched. So we're going to do a contest where people can send in their mother's famous recipe or their favorite mother's recipe, past or deceased. Mm -hmm. um, and then what we're going to do, Hillary and I are going to draw it live at, here at the garden shop. Um, and the third place uh, contestant will get a gift basket from the garden shop. The second place contestant winner will get a photo shoot with Michaela Prey of Envy Photogenics. Mm -hmm. And the first place uh, winners are going to be able to come on the show with Hillary and I. Yeah, as our guest host. Hillary and I are going to clear these plants out. We're going to set up some stools. <laughs> we're going to set up some wine. And we're going to let the uh, mother daughter, or just the daughter, or the son, mind you, and, or whoever, come on with their recipe and, and cook for the world. So, how, how do they, how do people? get you the recipes so yeah so what we're going to do is there will be a link um, once we launch it there will be a link that they can go on and enter a, a contest form and they'll be able to fill in their information and send it through here's a here's a uh, another question for people people like our producer he's one of those people one of those people don't eat meat he's oh, a, I was like he, where are we going with he's this a, he's 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 a vegetarian is um, can you do you accommodate vegetarians always sure well, any any because for me um a food preference dietary requirement is is to each person their own so i will accommodate any can, any food what about tofu can you cook with tofu i can or in a, uh, at, i actually like tofu right at thanksgiving i think he calls it tofurkey tofurkey uh, <laughs> <laughs> i've never did one of those yeah okay one more minute what do you have to say hillary uh stop into the garden shop check out all of our local Crafts, um, meats, cheeses. Ugh. And you're on Elm. Cheese. I love cheese. And you're on Elm Street. Street. Uh, Our beautiful flowers. Can't uh, forget the flowers. Formerly called Spates. Formerly called yes. Meters uh, Flower Shop, too, back in the old days. What was it called? Meters. M E A D E R. Oh, yes. yep. And your final words. My final word is get out there and cook. Just cook. I want to. I was see, headed at my guest that we had on earlier. Just to cook. I would love to see special guests, people like Ron Wright, Ernie Wright, and I, I want to see you cook for them and have them help you. They're you're, amazing. You're, like I've been. I mean, if anybody knows our family, and again, Hillary and I were very blessed to be a part of the Wright family. Yes. They are. I mean, our families are amazing too. And I'm sure sometimes our moms watch us and they're like, "Stop calling them Wrights." They have a family line too, um, but we were very lucky to be yeah. to be um, brought into the right family. It is an amazing family, um, very close knit, and they do a ton of stuff all the time, and they're always cooking. Like our guest, everything for, is around food. Everything is centered around yeah. food, which I love, which is why I think I fell in love with that family uh, as soon as I did Matthew. Um, but our one of our guests was Tiffany Morin, um, who is Faye okay. Wright Morin's daughter. And that's Matt and Todd's aunt. Um, her father is one of the best cooks I think I've ever wow. come in contact with. He can grill up anything. Grill up anything, and it tastes so good. I I will tell you. Uh, Ron I, would be a fun one yeah, to have yeah, on the show, would. though. Yeah. And Annette did tell me because I I wrote a several part series on her life, and she did tell me the one time that she was well, the one time that she would get in trouble by her husband or they'd have a little spat is because she would buy an outrageous amount of food because she wanted to feed everybody. And oh, she, she, awesome. she tried to, he tried to rein her in because of, in her food budget, but anybody who came to the door, they oh, needed definitely. a, they yeah. needed a yeah. meal. If you go visit Grammy Ray, she probably That's still to thing. this day yeah. is like, are you hungry? Oh, yeah. when I was there, she was feeding me uh, donuts. Yeah. yeah. yeah homemade I love donuts. donuts. Okay. Hillary's Grammy made some of the best raised Amazing donuts I've ever had in my life. I think you ought to take a road trip. And go where? Go visit Grammy Wright and have her show you the old-fashioned way. All right. That sounds fun. Yeah. We could do that. 
Okay, uh, I will let you go now so you can get back to work in the flower shop and you can get back to work in the kitchen. Awesome. Perfect. And if you need any, if either one of you need any guidance on cooking, call, call me. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to another segment of the Northeast Kingdom Voice. Thank you.